So this video is a pre-lab for the redox titration lab, or the analysis of an oxalate unknown. You will be given an unknown compound that has the oxalate ion in it. That's the C2O42 minus. Your goal is to determine the identity of the unknown by determining its percent of oxalate. So here are your three unknowns. You'll get one of those three. We'll react the unknown with a standard solution of KMnO4 and then determine the percentage of oxalate. So a standard solution, we learned before, is a solution of known molarity. So when we say we're going to standardize a solution, we say we're going to figure out its molarity. So unfortunately, we have to first standardize the KMnO4. This means find its molarity. Uh, solutions of KMnO4 do not keep for very long. They tend to decompose. So we have to check the molarity when we want to use it. Um, this would be good for about two or three weeks, but our solutions haven't been used for a long time, so we're going to need to figure out their molarities. So the first part of this lab is to standardize the KMnO4 solution. We'll do this um, by reacting it with something that we nickname FAS. It's ferrous ammonium sulfate, and there's the formula, and you can see why maybe we nickname it FAS. Um, if you recall our unit with net ionic equations, you may recall that sometimes we only need to worry about the parts of the compounds that are actually reacting, uh, and that's going to be the case here. So in FAS, the only thing we actually care about is the Fe2 plus ion, and in KMnO4, the only thing we care about is the MnO4 minus. So the Fe2 plus is going to turn into Fe3 plus, 2 plus to 3 plus, the potassium, the permanganate is going to turn into Mn2+, and this will happen in acidic solution. So hopefully you also remember our unit on redox reactions. So this is a redox reaction that occurs in acidic solution. You're going to need to first balance this equation in acidic solution. You start by writing your half reactions and use that method we learned a couple months ago. So you may need to go back to your notes or ask for help. For the actual lab part, you're going to titrate your sample of FAS with a solution of KMnO4 in the presence of a small amount of sulfuric acid. So you're going to take about 0.2 grams of your FAS. It's kind of like this light green solid. And you're going to put it in your flask. You're going to add 1 to 2 milliliters of sulfuric acid and about 50 milliliters of water. It, just about. It makes no difference. It could be anywhere from like 25 to 75, so just some water. Okay. So that way your solution's ready to go. And then you're going to be given a burette. Okay, A burette is, uh, I'll, we'll show you a burette. I think you've seen one. Um, we're going to need to fill our burette with our potassium permanganate solution. So a few things. Never pour over your head. Always remove the burette from the clamp before you fill it. KMnO4 will stain everything that you do brown permanently. Okay, Anything it gets on clothes they're gone. Um, you're going to pour your KMnO4 from the bottle to a small beaker into, into the burette. So don't be this guy. Okay, This guy is pouring a solution over his head. He's trying to pour it from a big, huge bottle into a burette, and he's about to get all of the things he wears stained brown. Okay, Make sure your burette is closed before you fill it, or it will just come out the other end and go all over the floor. So this is closed, this is open. You can see open, the solution can come right out, closed, it can't, okay? Once you fill your burette, we also have to fill this bottom part. So what you do is you put the beaker underneath and you open it and you fill it in and then you close it again, okay? You gotta remember to fill this bottom part. You also need to check to make sure when you fill it, there aren't any air bubbles. If you've got some air bubbles, just try running some through it again or uh, call me over and I'll show you a quick trick to get rid of it. Okay, so some little things about filling your burette. Make sure you're being very careful and try not to get this stuff all over the place. Um, so for the titration, you'll add the KMnO4, which will be in your burette, into your solution. Okay, so you've got your FAS in here, all dissolved. Um, we're going to add it slowly and in small quantities. Stop frequently to swirl your solution. Don't add the KMnO4 solution too quickly or you're going to see a brown solid forming. This is the wrong product. 
Okay, you're trying to make MnO. You're trying to make Mn2 plus. If you see some brown stuff, you've made MnO2. Okay, if you if you slow down, it's not a big deal. If you keep adding it fast, it just gets browner and browner, and your results won't be good. So as you add the KmnO4, you're going to see a pink color start to appear in your solution. That's your KmnO4 solution. But then it's going to react with the FAS, and the color will disappear. Okay. Eventually, though, you won't have any FAS to react with, and the pink color will remain. So the end point of your titration is when the pink color persists for several seconds without fading. Your goal is to try to get the solution to be as pale pink as possible. This is not pale pink. That's bright pink. We're going to be looking for a pale, pale pink color. Okay? And you will do three trials. Okay? So you'll do three different trials. So... Um, as you make up a solution, one partner could be titrating, the other partner can be making up the other solution, and then trade off. Make sure this lab has a total of uh, six titrations. Make sure you each do three, okay, so everybody's getting some practice. So calculation-wise, you're going to have measured out your grams of FAS, so that's recorded. We're going to change grams to moles. You'll have to go back and find the molar mass of that big, long compound. Okay? And then you're going to go ahead and use your mole ratio here from that balanced equation that you wrote. Okay? Your balanced redox reaction. You're going to need your mole ratio. That's why we have to balance it. Okay? And your moles of FAS are the same as your moles of Fe2+. So you'll be able to relate the Fe2+, to the permanganate in the reaction. Okay? And then you're going to change moles to molarity. I'm going to let you figure out how to get from moles to molarity. That'll be your molarity of MnO4 minus, and that's the same as the molarity of KmnO4. And then you'll have done three trials, so go ahead and get an average. So we'll have an average molarity of KmnO4, and we'll have standardized our reaction. Okay? So now we're going to react our standardized KmnO4 with our unknown sample. Okay, again, we only need to consider the net ionic equation, the things that are actually reacting. So it's going to be the oxalate in your unknown with the permanganate, which is going to give you Mn2+, and oxalate is going to give you CO2, and you'll be in acidic solution again. Okay? Um, this procedure is going to be very similar, but there's a couple changes. Okay? So unknown between 0.1 and 0.2 grams. Same sulfuric acid, same water, but we have to heat it, okay? So we're going to, in the hood, right, in the hood, because we're heating sulfuric acid, we're going to heat it between 70 and 80 degrees. Try not to go over 80 degrees, okay? Once it's, so you put a thermometer in there, right? We've got a thermometer, okay? Um, once it's between 70 and 80, you can take it out of the hood, and you'll titrate it with the KMNO4 just as you did before. You want to do it kind of quickly, but you don't have to rush or anything. It will stay warm enough, okay? So the only difference really here is you're using your unknown and you're heating it up before you react it, okay? Once you've got your three trials, we can do our part two calculations, okay? So you've got the molarity of the KMnO4 from part one. If you multiply that by the liters that you just titrated with, You'll get your moles of KMnO4, which is the same as moles of MnO4 minus. So you can use your balanced equation. Okay, so you'll have written another balanced equation, right? Another balanced redox reaction. You can relate it to moles of oxalate and then multiply by the molar mass of oxalate. Make sure you just use the molar mass of oxalate, not of whatever you think your unknown is, okay? So just the oxalate, just two C's and four O's, okay? Divide it by the mass of your unknown, and you'll get your percentage of oxalate, okay? And then you need to go back to the three unknowns and calculate the percentage of oxalate in each one, okay? It's just a percent composition problem. You see how we're sneakily sticking stuff in from before this year? Um, and then... You know, if these are, say, 20%, 40%, and 90%, and yours is 41%, what's your unknown? It's probably this one, okay? So you just carry your, compare your percentages, okay? 
So in this lab, you'll have learned to do a titration and reviewed some important concepts from net ionic equations and redox reactions and some mole and percent composition uh, calculations. Okay, and that's it.